Hello and welcome to today's Open Dental webinar. We're going to be covering the feature highlights of the major version 24, so 24.1 through 24.4. We'll cover some preferences that were added, some additions to each of the modules, as well as some miscellaneous and e-services features we've added. So starting with our preferences, you'll notice that some of our setup windows have moved into this preferences window, such as our miscellaneous ortho, and enterprise setup windows. The first preference we'll go over is the pop-up for changing a provider when you move an appointment. When you move an appointment in Open Dental, it prompts you whether you want to change the provider or not. We now have a preference on how this prompt is handled. When you hit enter on your keyboard, you can have it default to yes, so that it changes the provider as soon as you see the prompt and hit enter, or no, so that it does not change the provider when you see the prompt and you hit enter. Alternatively, you can have it set to not prompt, but still change the provider every time, or not prompt and don't change the provider. The next references we've added is regarding texting. If you're utilizing integrated texting in Open Dental, we now have a preference to send an opt-out message when the text OK status has changed from yes to no on the patient edit information window. Additionally, in the family preferences, We've added the option to verify addresses with USPS. So what that'll look like really quick. If we're editing a patient and we save the patient information with an address, it's going to verify the address with USPS. And it'll prompt us to see if we want to utilize the address that is recommended by USPS or we can accept those changes or not. And it'll update the information for the patient. Next up, we have an insurance related preference for out of network fee schedules and whether blank entries are treated as a zero in a fee schedule. We've added some claim preferences as well. Specifically for medical claims, when we receive a medical claim, whether it prompts for the primary claim to be sent, just like it does for secondary claims if we have that preference turned on. We also have a preference for recalculating estimates for received claim procedures. Another claim preference that we've added is requiring a claim to have no missing data before you can save it. If you're familiar with that pop-up that lets you know that your patient is missing an address, your provider is missing an MPI, or any number of missing information, you can now require that information to be entered before you can even save the claim. Next up, we have a payment plan preference. We're using the date of production as the date showing instead of having two separate columns in the payment plan. This will additionally change how the production shows up on the patient's account or payment plan. Last preference we've added is being able to sort images by the date descending in the imaging module instead of date ascending. Next, we'll cover a couple of things we've added to the appointments module, specifically regarding appointment views. If we're utilizing the week view, we can now use the preference in week view, only show days that have scheduled providers or appointments. If we have particular days, we're not open and we're not seeing patients, which reduces the view to only show those days. Additionally, we've added the ability to copy appointment views, which makes it nice and easy. If you need to make some changes for a particular view and you want all of the same information in the main list, but maybe show different operatories, or if you're utilizing clinics, you can easily switch the clinics as well. Next up in the family module, we've added some insurance related additions, specifically regarding age limits and code groups. Previously, fluoride and sealant were hard-coded as the only options we could change for age limits. Now, if we go into our code group setup, we can set any one of these code groups to view in our age limits section. Another code group addition we've added is the option to add an other benefit with a code group instead of an insurance category or specific code. Next up is the account module. We've added some integration with EDS or attachment, so you can directly attach things in Open Dental. We've also made some changes to how Dental Exchange attachments are handled, 
You'll notice it tells you to use the right-click options on the claim. And if you right-click the claim, you'll see some options for snipping an attachment, selecting an attachment from the imaging module, pasting an attachment from your clipboard, or viewing the sent attachments for dental exchange. We've also added the ability to hover over the insurance estimate number and see any outstanding claim procedures. Another claim feature we've added is if a patient has three insurances, we can create a claim. And when we save that claim, it will create all three insurance claims for us. If the patient has a medical insurance or tertiary or anything beyond a tertiary insurance, you will still need to create that manually. We've also added the ability to use claim validation for one or more zero dollars on a procedure. That way, if you've accidentally selected something that's a zero dollar procedure that was not marked as do not bill to insurance, it'll flag that for you before you send the claim. Next up are some payment plan changes. We're working with a payment plan. You now have the ability to edit future charges or add additional charges. If you're utilizing payment plans, use sheets. You also have the option to set a specific sheet on that particular payment plan. Or if you're utilizing the payment plan templates, you can set the specific sheet on that template as well. If you have custom payment plan sheets and nothing is specifically set for the payment plan or for the template, it will use the top sheet in the list, usually by alphabetical order. Lastly, in the account module is the ability to utilize a procedure code for sales tax. So if we're highlighting a procedure, we can utilize the dropdown and click sales tax to calculate the sales tax for that particular procedure. This can be useful if you need to build that out on a claim. And you'll find this in setup and preferences, in account adjustments, the sales tax procedure code. Procedure codes as sales tax are not, are not able to be used with automated sales tax, as those will only be able to be used with adjustments. We generally recommend that if you've been utilizing a particular way of handling sales tax, that you continue to utilize that. Otherwise, if you start switching it up, you'll have to run multiple reports in order to crack your sales tax. Next up are some Perio chart additions. When we're looking at a perio chart, we also have a new line for auto attached ginge, which takes the MGJ minus the probing depth and auto calculates that for us. There's also the option to utilize recession instead of the term gingival full margin and an integration with Bola AI for voice perio charting. Next up in the imaging module is an integration with Pearl AI. This is a diagnostic tool that you can utilize in Open Dental in order to get more information about particular x-rays. You can also set up automatic import for particular folders so that as soon as you take an image into that folder, it automatically sends over to Pearl for annotation. We've also added the ability to print all images in a category. If you have a category highlighted, you can utilize the drop down next to the print button to print all in that category. Moving on to some miscellaneous things we've added in Open Dental. In our recall setup, you now have the option to set up additional language translations for recall messages. So if you have a patient who is marked as using a different preferred language, and you'd like to translate some messages to send out to the patient, you can now set those up in Open Dental. If the patient doesn't have a preferred language or you don't have a translation set up for their preferred language, they will just use the default template for their language. We've also added some fee schedule changes. In our fee schedule section, we've got the ability to add notes to fee schedules, which can be useful to track why fees changed or things like that. You also have the ability to set effective dates on fee schedules. So if you are increasing your fees, but you don't want them to take effect until the first of the year, 
or you're importing a fee schedule that doesn't take effect until a certain date, or so on and so forth, there are multiple places to set an effective date for those. You can also view this information on a particular procedure by double clicking on it and then clicking the more button and seeing the date effective information. You can also set effective dates on particular fees on particular procedures for each individual fee schedule. We've also made some changes to a couple of different reports. First up is the incomplete procedure notes. In addition to the normal way we utilize the report, we now have the ability to include all procedures with no notes. You'll notice we can use this as an either or filter when we're looking at this particular report. Next up is our procedures report. We've made some changes by splitting up this particular report. The daily procedures report is now two separate reports. The production by procedure, which we can still utilize by running the report. We can look for particular procedure codes. And this is still a printable report that gives you the quantity of those procedures that were done in that time frame. And then we have the procedures report, which we can still run very similarly by utilizing similar codes. But now this is an interactive report that we can refresh in live time, as well as right click to go to the patient's chart. You can also still print this report and it looks much like it used to with listing each individual procedure in that time frame. Much like we were previously able to change the fee schedules for multiple insurance plans all at once, we now have the ability to change the plan type for as many plans as we have selected. Open Dental has also added the support for swipeable badges. If we go into our security window for a particular uh, user, you can add a badge ID. Alternatively, you can utilize the security badges setup window and add a badge ID there. This, you, this supports a badge reader with text output. So you can swipe the badge and have the user just automatically sign in, or you can swipe the badge and have it select the user and they still need to enter their password. Some e-services changes we've added is the ability to utilize payment portal in eClipboard instead of the previous way we handled payments. Now, when we take a payment from a patient, it'll open payment portal for them to take the payment there. We've also made some changes to OD Touch with e-routing. We've made some options available for our checklists, including custom checklist items. So we can use a checklist item and call it whatever we want. Maybe we want to remember to give the patient a, a toothbrush. And we can add that to the checklist, which doesn't take any particular action in OD Touch, but does add it to the checklist to remind the user to do that item. Additionally, if we're utilizing a particular action that has a sheet attached, such as an exam sheet or a consent form, we can now select a specific default to load for that action for that checklist. You've also added the ability to print from OD Touch. So now you can set up a specific workstation to be the printer for OD Touch. And depending on that workstation settings, that will be utilized in Open Dental or in OD Touch. You can print things like prescriptions and treatment plans and other things in the app. We've also added integrated texting into OD Touch, much like it was in OD Mobile. You can now send text messages if you're also utilizing the integrated texting service. A new feature that we've added in Open Dental is the message to pay feature. As for utilizing the payment dropdown, you'll see this new option for send message to pay, which will send the patient a link to their statement, as well as a link to pay online, which will take them to the payment portal. This is still only available for integrated credit card processors. You can also decide whether you want to send a family statement to the guarantor or a patient only statement and decide whether that sends to the guarantor or the specific patient. You can also utilize this in the billing list. 
in your defaults, you can add the message to pay URL into the email or text message that sends out to your patient when you send a statement. If you're not utilizing an integrated credit card processor or you're not utilizing message to pay, you can turn that little drop down off in our preferences, which will hide that option in the payment drop down menu. Those are some of the big features we've added in Open Dental in the last several major versions. Again, 24.1 through 24.4. Thank you for joining us for this version's feature highlights video. If you have any additional questions, please contact our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com. And make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications.